Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a CPA simulation or an exercise that could appear in intermediate accounting that deals with converting cash to accrual. This topic is important and it's tested on the exam and the reason is simple. There's a practical reason for that. There is a good chance after you graduate from college, you're going to be working with a CPA firm. If you're studying for the CPA exam, it makes sense to work in a CPA firm. If you work in a CPA firm, most likely you are going to have small and medium clients that keep their books on cash basis. And oftentimes they will need to convert to accrual. And basically this exercise would illustrate this concept, converting from cash to accrual. And that's why this topic is extremely important on the CPA exam. Therefore, if you're a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. Whatever course you are taking, you can keep it. I can be a useful addition to your CPA review course. I can add 10 to 15 points to your grade by explaining the material differently, by showing you how to solve the problem differently. Not better, not worse, just differently. And you may need that alternative explanation. Think of it as a backup explanation. Your risk is one month of subscription. Your potential return is passing the exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university is doing on the CPA exam. And here's a list of all the courses that I cover including intermediate accounting. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, connect with me on YouTube as well. And on LinkedIn, you can take a look at my recommendation. Students that use my system to pass the exam and see how they used it, please connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So let's take a look at this exercise. Adam Loan Service Company maintains books on cash basis. However, the company recently borrowed 160000 from a local bank, and the bank requires Adam to provide annual financial statement prepared on accrual basis. And believe it or not, this is actually what happened in the real world. They come to you, small businesses. They went to the bank. The bank want accrual financial statement. Their bookkeeper, or they, oftentimes they don't have a bookkeeper. They just they keep the record on their bank statement. Now they need to, or tax basis for that matter, now they need to prepare financial statements. So what they do is you, you will take a look at the record, you will take a look at their cash disbursement, cash receipts, you will try to re, re, restructure their accounts payable, accounts receivable, uh, their current liabilities and current assets to convert. So this is what we are giving. You are told, or based on the record, cash collected from customers, 380000 And usually, it, if it's either recorded in their QuickBooks or you can take a look at their bank statement and just add up all the deposits. And if they're all receipts from customers, you will know it's 380 Cash paid, again, you can look at their bank statement, salaries, supplies, rent, insurance, miscellaneous expenses. And on, on their cash basis, they, they brought 380000 They spent two, They spent two seventy. Their net operating cash flow is 110,000. Now, uh, now we're going to restructure their account receivable and their account payable as of the beginning of the year and as of the end of the year. And their account receivable, and how do you know this? Basically, you will talk to the client and you'll ask them, as of the beginning of the year, you, you might be saying, how did we end up with account receivable if it's cash basis? You just ask them, how, how, how many clients or what was the amount that was owed to you by clients and they would say well at the beginning of the year it was thirty-eight thousand. and this is how we establish the beginning receivable and you'll ask them as of today at the end of the year how how much do you, do customers still owe you they would say thirty thousand. and this is how you would restructure this you will ask them if they have any prepaid or if they prepay anything uh, supplies how much supplies they had how much supplies they have now and any accrued liabilities. In addition to that, you learn that the bank loan is 6%. It was dated September 30th, and there is depreciation of 16,000 for the year. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna convert from cash to accrual. That's, that's what we are going to do. Now, how do we convert from cash to accrual? Simply put, we're gonna take each number on the income statement and determine what is the accrual amount of that number? What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at cash collected from customers. This is how much cash we actually collected. Now we need to convert this number into revenue because what matters is how much of that cash that we receive is considered revenue. Now, how do we know whether this amount is revenue or not? We need to examine, we need to analyze the related account, uh, the related balance sheet account, which is for 
which is for revenue is account receivable. Therefore, we have to analyze account receivable. Simply put, here's what we are saying. If we restructure, I'm going to do it in two different ways. If we restructure account receivable, we started the year, we started the year with three thirty eight thousand and at the end of the year we had thirty thousand this is what our account receivable is showing so account receivable went down what does that mean it means the customer paid us an additional eight thousand dollar that has nothing to do with this year revenue it has to do with prior year revenue why because my receivable went down simply put let's restructure the whole thing so let's assume I received $380,000 in cash. Therefore, I have to credit account receivable when I receive the cash, $380,000. What amount do I have here to make the entry balance? The amount is 372. Let me do it in a different color. 300 and, whoops, 372. Okay, 372. Okay, let me do it in a different, from a journal entry perspective. This is from a T account. So simply put, I restructured the T account and this is what it looks like. Well, if I received cash from, from a journal entry perspective, I say cash is 380,000 and this is the cash, 380,000. My receivable went down. It means I credited my receivable overall of 8,000. So what's left is revenue and revenue must have been 370. Therefore, I'm going to start to prepare my financial statement. So first, we have the heading under the accrual basis, and service revenue is 372. So I took what's cash, and I converted it into revenue. Now, the opposite would have been true. Simply put, if my receivable, if my account receivable went up, I would have took the cash. This is the shortcut, plus the increase in account receivable. Here, I took the cash and I deducted the decrease in account receivable to arrive to revenue. So this is what happened. So I just converted cash collected from customers to service revenue. And this is what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be taking each account separately and analyzing it, okay? I'm gonna look at, now we're gonna look at the, our operating expenses, starting with salaries, 186,000. What I do is I will take a look at my accrual account or at, at my balance sheet account. And I want to determine whether I have any accrual for salaries expense. There is no accrual. If there is no accrual, if this is the cash that I paid, simply put, it means that's the amount that I accrued, 186. For, from an accrual perspective and cash perspective, there's no change. Supplies. Supplies, let's erase this and analyze supplies because we do have an account for supplies. So what happened to my supplies account? Let's restructure the T account. Let's look at the supplies account. Supplies starting the year with 1,600, 1,600, ended up with 1,800. Well, I know that I have $200 more of supplies, okay? Why? Because look, the overall, there was an increase of 200. Of, there's, there's an increase of 200, okay? There's an increase of 200. What does that mean? It means, uh, it means of this amount of the 31,000 that I expensed, not all of it is supplies expense. Why? Because I paid, but it was, it, it should be supplies. Well, let's restructure the, 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 uh, the entry. I paid cash credited 31,000 for supplies. Okay. And I know from my journal entry that supplies went up. So supplies, I need to debit supplies. I debited supplies 200. This is how I know this. Well, it means supplies expense must have been 31, uh, 30,800. 30,800, okay? Again, let's go back to the T account here, okay? My beginning balance is 1,600, and I recorded 31,000. It means I removed from my expenses I removed from my from my supplies 31,000. I expensed this much. Well, if I take 1,600 minus 31,000, it's not equal to 1,800. I it mean I it means I purchased an additional 200, which is showing. Okay, it means I purchased an additional 200. 
the difference between those two because supplies went up it means I did not consume it although I paid 31,000 in supplies but I, I consumed $200 less how did I know I consumed less because my supplies went up my supplies asset went up this is supplies expense okay this is the expense account therefore from an accrual perspective I only expensed 30,800 30,800 let's take a look at rent now the opposite would have been true if supplies if the supplies account went down if the supplies account went down it means I even paid more for supplies it means if supplies account went down overall it means I will have to take 31,000 plus since my supplies account went down it means I consumed more then I will add the difference if the difference was higher then it would have been 31,200 simply put what I did here is I took the supplies and I deducted 200 because I used 200 less of supplies than I purchased although I purchased 31 but I only used 30,800 because my supplies went up let's take a look at so we're done with supplies let's take a look at rent rent it shows that I paid 15,000 it doesn't look that I have any account on the balance sheet not prepaid rent or, or not rent payable therefore rent expense is 15,000 insurance is 12,000 prepaid insurance prepaid insurance started at zero prepaid insurance started at zero and I ended up with 2600 so from a cash perspective everything that I buy I would say it's an expense because I'm I'm a cash basis taxpayer but what happened is my prepaid went up well simply put I did spend 12,000 I paid 12,000 in cash but 2600 of it I still have it means I have to reduce my insurance expense therefore my insurance expense is 9400 from a from a journal entry perspective I paid cash 12,000 my prepaid account went up 2600 it means the expense the prepaid expense the prepaid expense must have been 9400 so this is how I figure out the insurance expense miscellaneous expense I paid at 26,000 here they're saying I have a liability be careful whether you are dealing with a liability account or an asset account so when you are doing those converting cash to accrual be careful whether you are uh, can, uh, whether you are going from a cash to accrual using an asset or a liability because it makes a huge difference my miscellaneous expense it means I paid 26,000 however my liabilities my accrued liabilities that are related to this account that are related to this account showing that I went from 3,000 to 4,000 it means my liabilities went up by a thousand what does that mean when my liabilities goes up it means I am not paying for something it means I am not paying it means I am expensing something but I am not paying for it huh one more time what does that mean it means I did from a cash this is the cash account this is the cash number the cash number I paid 26,000 in cash in addition to that I accrued another 1,000 it means 620 it means my expense is 26 plus a thousand it means my expense is 27 and the reason I add the expense because this is I add the 1,000 because my liabilities went up when your liabilities goes up it means you are recording an expense because every time you accrue an expense you debit an expense and you credit a liability here what's happening is you increased your liabilities by a thousand it means you increased your expenses by a thousand but notice this expense is not cash that's why it's not showing with the 26 therefore when I convert I have to add this additional 1000 and if you want to see it from a journal entry perspective I credited cash 26,000 I credited accrued liabilities a thousand because it, it went up by a thousand notice it went from three to four therefore the miscellaneous expense to balance is 27,000 and this is how I end up with 27,000 this is how I end up with 27,000 so be careful whether you are dealing with a liability or an asset okay be careful because it makes a huge difference and that's why converting from cash to accrual you have to understand your liabilities how your liabilities work and how your asset work let me give you a shortcut but if you really want to learn this you gotta really understand the cash flow statement every time your assets go up 
every time your assets go up from a cash flow perspective it means your cash is going down because to acquire asset you have to consume cash every time your assets when you are using your assets i'm assuming here other than cash because we are dealing with cash when your assets goes down it means you are not using cash it means your cash flow is not being i'm sorry your cash flow is up when your asset goes down when you are when your account receivable goes down it means you are collecting money when your supplies goes down it means you are using supplies without spending the cash now when your prepaid goes down it means you are using your prepaid without paying cash now okay this is for assets for liabilities it's the opposite when your liabilities go up it means from a cash flow perspective your cash flow goes up so when your liability goes up like accrued liabilities here when your accrued liabilities goes up it means you are not spending cash you are you're gonna have to pay it later but for now it's 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 an increase in your cash you're not paying cash you are using other people's money to record your expenses like here you are using your expense in a thousand but you're not paying it now when your liabilities goes down what does that mean when your liabilities goes down it means you are paying off your liabilities therefore it's your cash is going down your cash is going down so you have to understand this relationship extremely uh, extremely well extremely well okay let's keep going so also the company had depreciation of the equipment of 16,000 therefore we book depreciation then total operating expenses is 200 uh, 284,200 now we're going to take uh, service revenue minus operating expenses will give us operating income now we still have to deal with the loan okay now remember the loan is not part of the operating expenses the loan is part of other expenses not operating expenses therefore we have to compute the interest on that loan the interest on that loan well how do we compute the interest we took the loan in September so we have end of September be careful so we have October November December we borrowed money for three months and the interest rate on this money was six percent as a result it's going to be 2400 the interest expense therefore interest expense is 2400 now we can find that income 84,400 we're ignoring taxes here obviously for the sake of this example so what we did is we took cash disbursement and we convert them into accrual we convert them into accrual figures accrual figures again this number is extremely important for your cpa exam this type of question why because on the exam you are expected to know how to convert from cash to accrual i can help you understand this on my website i have explanation examples but to understand this my 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 suggestion is to understand the cash flow statement first because that's going to give you a comprehensive review then go back and view cash to accrual Okay, that, that that's my advice to you but it doesn't mean i cannot teach you the cash to accrual right from the get-go and i do so in my in my recording i do say and, and, and i would I, I would say i'm teaching you this and you will use it for your cash flow many students they find it easier to start with the cash flow and go back to cash to accrual it's up to you how you would use it make sure you understand it both ways how to go from cash to accrual and from accrual to cash okay because the cash flow statement is you're going to take your accrual and convert back to cash Anyhow, stay safe, good luck, and study hard for the exam.